Welcome to Danny Soap DIY. Base coat, the mason jar sign with the truffle chalk paint. I'm using this one from summer. The elephant I'm using to do the cap for the lid. Whenever you do this one, grab you a little bit of white and do you some dry brushing. Right now, I have this sped up and I'm creating a plank-like background. By using the white blended in to that elephant gray that was left over on the brush, do some round circles to create almost like knot effects in the wood and the rest of it dry brushing. The dashes will be bold in the beginning, but as you use it, you're gonna get the dry brushing effect. Grab a magic marker. This is the best way to make refined lines. If you pay attention on the sides, I do a C, like a comma, to the left and to the right. That creates the roundness and doing the lines back and forth. When you do this, you're gonna get that effect it looks like rings in the lid. Using a little bit more of that white that was blended before with the dirty brush and dry brush that lid, they'll give it a patine look, more set in and blended more well. Where the lines are already there, it will give it a greater effect. Now we need to mark a line four inches down from the bottom of the lid. This will give us our base boundary for where our lettering will be placed. And I will draw a pencil line there. That just kind of stops me so I don't paint above it. Grab two rounds, one a little bit larger than the other, and make two circles with a pencil. This will be the snowman. I took my pencil and I drew the line more angled here took the round off of it. In actuality, after I painted the snowman, I found that I could have left them completely round. It would have worked better, but I fix it. So using white and a number 10 or number 12 flat brush, the bolder, wider flat brush that you can feel comfortable using, you will build confidence. You do not have to be exact because I'm going to show you some techniques in this painting that will speed up that job, clean up your lines. So the main thing is just get the base coat on there. So once you've got your snowman painted, you can now grab you three shades of green. You want one dark, one that is light, and one that's kind of in between the boat. If you don't have but two greens, you can blend them to make your medium. You're going to be working on the chisel of the brush, so let me bring this closer. This is sped up by two times, but I'm using the chisel of the brush to do a pouncing effect. Like branches, you'll go back and forth between a darker green, a lighter green, and a medium green and just working on the chisel and going back and forth. Think of a tree when you do this. Think of a cedar tree and how limpy and long the limbs are. They just kind of lean downward. And if they have snow on them, they lie down even more. And just keep going back and forth between your dark, your lighter, and your medium. You will build confidence with each stroke of the brush. Right now, you're creating a position. You're creating the illusion of trees. So by doing this practice, you'll be able to build out your tree even more as we go along. Right now, we're positioning everything. We're building it out. And we will do more blending to make these look even more like trees. I will tell you guys this. Had I done this painting again, I would have made my trees a lot taller. And I would have made the first one on the far left a great deal slimmer and taller. 
the next one and then I actually end up adding a third tree later on. For the time being, I'm gonna leave as is and you will see how this thing takes transformation as we go along. This will give you an idea of how to do yours and make it even more beautiful, gorgeous, and better than mine. I could have made the snowman a little more whimsical. This was a first out of the gate doing this painting. I am telling you and showing you some techniques that I would have improved upon had I done this painting again. Once again, just working the trees with a lighter color and building them out. Now they're starting to take a little better shape and it's better to work that paint when it's wet. So I'm gonna show you the brush handle technique on how to create branches in your trees. As you can see, I dipped the handle of the brush into that brown. And this is the truffle brown, the chalk paint. But I'm gonna bring it closer so you can see. I have this sped up, but as you make the marks with the brush handle and dip into the brown, you'll start to make like branches of your tree and things will just start to take form for you. And I'm pulling it down now with the handle. Once again, a little more confident, feeling a little bit better about where that paint is flowing and it's kind of telling me where it best fits. That damp green paint brush on the other side and pulling that brown through. And once again, working the green while it's wet and that brown, and it will give it that blending and just kind of give it the illusion of strong tree branches and trunks. Now we'll work on the trees a little bit more. So let's move to our snowman. Using the peace sign for positioning, if you place your fingers there, it'll help your mind and your brain and eyes to coordinate with your motor skills to make these eyes. The exact distance of the peace sign for the eyes is the exact distance from the eyes to the nose and from the nose to the mouth. I use the center between the eyes and then I put a left and a right dot for the smile and fill in the blanks. Grabbing objects from around you make great templates. The top lid of our paint bottles are perfect for the top hat. If you have a number eight flat brush, that works really good for doing the top hat. If I were to do the painting again, this C slide motion, I would pull that hat out a little bit broader. I would actually make the brim of the hat broader. Using the brush handle is a technique to refine your lines. As I told you before, when you're doing your painting, enjoy the painting aspect of it. It will build confidence. And that brush handle, it gives you more control like a pencil or a marker. And by dipping the handle in and sliding it along the edges will straighten your lines up. A little bit bigger paint marker here to make his buttons. And of course we have to have a carrot nose. I did that with paint marker. It was just quicker, easier. Now we're going to dot his eyes with our paintbrush handle. And if you have a toothpick, that's great. If you have a script brush, you can do some dry brushing to give his hat detail. I dip my script brush into the paint. I use a paper towel to take off the excess and then begin dry brushing the top hat. The great thing about this technique on the hat is it looks so good just like it is. You could really truly stop once you did the top hat in a dry brushing effect. In this particular mason jar sign that we are doing, 
we're actually going to be doing some three-dimensional decorating. I did add some lines to the carrot with a black marker. So now let's work on those trees again. Once again with that script brush, dipping it in the white, and going back and forth, this is sped up to give it a snowy effect on the limbs of the tree. This is something you don't have to be perfect at. The more you dash and pull at it, the better it looks. This is one of those times when it, you see that letting the other paint dry, the green, and then going back over it with the white really makes those trees have that detail and jump. And don't worry so much because the great thing about painting, you can always paint over it. There are no mistakes. Using a black marker can give you more control on placement. So I did his arms with the black marker first. Then I went back with my smaller script paintbrush and painted right back over the markings. Those little snowflakes I got from Dollar Tree, and I just want the silver part. This will be for more detail on my mason jar snowman sign. I used the metal lettering. You could use vinyl lettering, stickers, these metal letters, any that you like, as long as you kind of leave it to the last. But you want to put it on before you do your lights. So we need to move those trees backwards, and as you can see, I've added the third tree. Using the chisel of your brush and a little bit of inking, so to speak, with the black. A 3 8 drill bit was perfect for the Dollar Tree pack of 10 count lights. Always check them with batteries before you glue them. So let's work on those three dimensional trimmings for our snowman. Our mason jar snowman paint along is really taking form. I added a ribbon to his top hat. I used the same ribbon, removing the wire and cutting it to size to create his scarf as well. I elected to create a little bit of fringe on his scarf with G twine. And I just folded it back and forth about an index finger tip width and glued it on the edge. Once the glue dried, I took my scissors and cut it to create the fray. And I did the same thing for the other tail of the scarf. I left it loose. The other one is glued to the board. It's just the way it took form. Just work with it. Now I'm going to add some red with snowflake ribbon to the top of my mason jar sign to truly give it that country, primitive, old-fashioned look. And I glued it to the back as well. Once I decided this looks really, really nice, well, I had to add some jute twine. There's nothing like jute twine magic. It makes everything look very wholesome and country. It just really gives it that primitive look. So I decided I really liked the shoe tie bow. And to add a little color, I added a little red bow with that ribbon. Grabbed my favorite picks. And then I decided to three-dimensional my snowman's top hat. A little greenery, a little pine cone, and a little berry to top it off. Now we're ready for our lights. Since we have the 3 8 hole drilled, the lights will literally sit in the hole. Once I put all of them into the holes, it was time to glue them down. And I just put glue around the outer hole. Make sure you glue your box with the screw side up so that when you replace your batteries or remove them from season to season, you'll be able to get the lid off. 
Now glue you a piece of wood or a bumper or something, the depth of the wires of your lights. This will keep it away from the wall, make it great for wall mounting, and protect the wires of the lights. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel, do the paint along, and by all means, give me a thumbs up. Merry Christmas, everyone. I enjoy doing these DIYs for you. Anytime you give a thumbs up, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel, it lets YouTube know that you truly enjoy the channel and it helps me out so very much. Merry Christmas, everyone. Until the next DIY, well, I'll be crafting, y'all.